This is London Calling. Afternoon all, back in town today. It is absolutely heaving, it's lunchtime, and I'm on the way to meet a friend that I've never actually met before. Um, somebody that I've been interacting with for quite some time now. Um, originally I got to know him as a cigar smoker, but he himself has moved on to uh, pipes as well. And um, we've uh, exchanged gifts more than once. Lovely fellow, and I'm really excited to meet him. Um, we've tried to meet a few times before, it hasn't worked out. But today is the day. So we're going to meet outside uh, JJ Fox's. We're going to uh, possibly pop into a pub over the road um, where they've got an outside area, and we shall share a pipe. So for now, just take you on a little drive, as we do. Well, when I say lunchtime, it's half two in the afternoon. Um, but still, the restaurants, the pubs, the cafes, they're all very busy at the moment. And the uh, roadworks are diabolical. It's a ridiculously bright, sunny, warm day for uh, for autumn. All the, the lawns and the greens in the middle of town are all taken up with people enjoying their lunch, lying down on the grass, or just relaxing. It's just a really, it feels like spring actually. It's, it's the wrong end of summer. been through this arch a few times, I'm not sure if it's of any significance uh, other than just joining these two buildings. <clears throat> Jamie Oliver's restaurant. Ooh, Jamie's Italian. It's such a different world in town. It, it's it's just uh, it's a world on its own, and it's a place really only to come to if you've got the money for it. So I just come for a pipe. I uh, I enjoy watching it and looking at it, but it's not my bracket, not by a long chalk. But the way town is evolving, I've said this so many times on my drives, literally, and they knock it up at a rate of knots as well. The speed that they put up new buildings is just, it's mind boggling. And you can see in the background there, you've got a, just there, you've got a, an old facade, but right at the top there, you've got a scaffold around that building. Um, I don't know if it's an old building which they're redeveloping or if it's a new build, I can't really see from here. But um, how they uh, intermingle old and new um, is, is, is amazing. I mean, that's obviously credit to the designers and architects, um, how they can still retain that real quality feel of a building that you'd expect in a town center like London, yet still have cutting edge look to it. Not just the, the uh, technical side of things being modern, but even the facades, the designs can look old and new at the same time and that's that's very cool and we're coming into Shaftesbury Avenue which is uh, theatre land really Trocadero up ahead, and 
and drop a zero. <coughs> One thing I miss on, on an iPhone is the ability to pause um, and then resume your recording, which the Samsungs do have, um, which I think is a very cool feature, which I don't understand why Apple have not incorporated that into the iPhone. It's such a hassle when you're doing a video to have to keep on editing videos because you've got several clips to put together. Whereas if you could pause and resume, you could, no editing needed, unless you wanted to do, you know, have some production value. But if you're just uploading a video without any uh, post-production, to have a pause and resume would be awesome. I just, I wish they would do that. It's actually a, a feature which is, is really making me really, really consider whether to move over to Android or possibly just get a device, an Android device for, for my recordings. That might be an option. Come on. Driving into Haymarket, which will bring us into Paul Mall, and Paul Mall runs up behind St. James's. <coughs> Keep adjusting the phone to make the picture straight, but it's the camera of the road actually. It's not the camera. <coughs> so we're about to turn into Pall Mall at the bottom. And I think if I'm not mistaken, the end of Pall Mall we told we turn right into uh, St. James's. Windscreen is a bit better today. Had a bit of a clean up this morning. Filled up my uh, water reservoir. Feeling a little bit more human. Now that I can see through my windscreen. Just saw a, a video by um, Beans of Virginia Woods. He doesn't like it. He never liked it. <clears throat> I've got to find a way to relieve him of some of his tins. I'll have to get in touch with him. He seems to have quite a stock in his cellar. Um, so maybe I'll do a little bit of a trade or a buy if he's into it, if he's up for it. Indicated that he was. <coughs> Building works, building works, one building after the next. I mentioned in the past, maybe a year or so ago, about the building works by JJ Foxes, um, and they've done a stunning building. You remember, they uh, hollowed out a building, kept the facade, and put a brand new, spanking new, modern block inside the original facade. Um, really, quite a cracking bit of architecture and construction. Anywho, I'm going to find somewhere to park and I will catch you soon possibly. I don't know if my friend is going to be happy with uh, being on the camera. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. It'll probably be a more of a private conversation, so maybe not. But uh, I might pop into one of the shops whilst I'm here. Although I was here yesterday, but we'll see. I'll catch you soon. Who is this guy? You know what, I can't remember his name. But, it, but he's well known. Um... And this hasn't been released yet? No, this will be their Christmas blend for this year and um, without the blue flowers because that's quite a, 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 a luxurious addition. And I I'm not entirely sure would add anything yeah, to it. The is, is phenomenal. Yeah. Well, do you know what it is? The, what's the flavor? No, no, I haven't got a clue. All that I know is the day after I got back from Germany, I rang <laughs> Danish pipe shop and said, right. <laughs> so when is that? Christmas? This will be coming in. Apparently they'll have copious quantities of it because I, I, I pre-ordered but I, apparently it's unnecessary. But um, 
But you know what, things like this, videos which go out, where people talk about it, it does yeah, create a mad gone. rush sometimes, yeah. yeah. So I might have to do this before I upload the video. I might have to put in a pre-order as well. <laughs> but uh, it's it's called Christmas. I think this means. Although I'm not big on on Pass, which means uh, Christmas fun. Oh yeah, Christmas fun. Yeah, it does smell delicious. Yeah, you must try some. I just got a bag of this as well. Jock, the loyal friend from South Africa. Yeah. Yep. Which is a also a burly blend. It looks like with a slight lake into it by the looks of it. But it's uh, quite pleasant, quite mild. Yeah, every day. And we got some falcons as well. So we'll be looking at those in due course. But you know, I think to some extent we all have that. Some more than others. You know, it, it's, we, all, we all suffer and struggle and um, have challenges that we have to overcome through our life. Not just uh, physical and, and uh, sort of... Uh, livelihood but mental Every, I think everybody I've said this so many times on my channel that any thinking person will have those challenges in life if you're not a thinking person then fine you just sail through life not worrying about anything so you've got to be unhuman if somebody doesn't um, go through life and, and have these kind of challenges because we, we're so inconsequential in this universe it's got to. It's got yes. to have an effect on you. Can I have a straight bourbon as well? With yeah. ice, but only yeah. a half. Just a, a little one. A bourbon. 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 With ice. Yes. Any Woodford Reserve? Just, Woodford, just Woodford. ice. Woodford, Woodford Reserve, yeah, lovely. Yeah. Just, just the a, smallest measure that you've got. Okay, let's do it. Without, with shot, ice. Yeah. 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 Thank you. We we're a very successful partnership, but what he did, from what I can work out, is just let her go knew that she was going to come to the UK and he decided to take the long boat to Argentina and let her go. She was always apparently, for, for the rest of her existence, incredibly grateful, always to, to him. him. for letting for, you go. Yeah. A lovely love story. Gentleman. Yeah, exactly. True love. Yeah. He loved her more than himself. Absolutely. And, and surely if, if there was any lesson to be learned with regard to faith and looking upstairs to he who cares, then that must have taken an enormous amount of courage and conviction in his faith to, to do that. I, I, especially at that time. Yeah. It, was, it was almost unheard of to divorce yeah. in yeah. those days, especially in that yeah. environment. It is now. I mean, divorcing the Jewish faith would, would be frowned upon, to say the very least. It is, but it's much more prevalent than, than it used to be. It's because much more prevalent than it used to be. It's just society. So society is much more throwaway, you know. And whereas, I mean, I know when I grew up, uh, when I was a kid, um, up into my teens, if a divorce happened in the Jewish Orthodox community, it made the news, you know. Everybody was talking about it because it was so rare. Um, and I can remember those one or two, and I still remember the names because it was so rare. Yeah. Nowadays, it's just, it, it's, it's rife. Well, it happens all the time. It made sense then, and it absolutely makes sense now. No regret whatsoever. Yeah. And, and I was talking to my mother about that um, the other day, about the pros and cons of divorce and how it's changed and become much more common in the Orthodox community. Um, and we kind of came to the conclusion that it's a double-edged sword. On the one hand, uh, 30, 40 years ago, people just stuck with it because they stuck with it, and they had a terrible existence. Yeah, remained unhappy for... And they remained unhappy all their lives. Um, whereas, um, nowadays, it's gone, to some extent, over the other way, where it's just kids are not prepared to, to stick at it and yes, try and make it work. Yes, it's almost disposable. Yeah, so whereas some percentage of the 30, 40 year old, uh, ago relationships turned and became loving after a time, because they worked at it, mm. some had a miserable life. So it's kind of nowadays when it's throwaway, it's, to some extent it's better that they find somebody else that they do get on with. On the other hand, perhaps they could have made it work if they stuck at it. So. Well, Justin's just popped out for a second, smoking the uh, Chacon. I'm smoking some of this uh, stuff which he brought along. He got this uh, into tobacco, and this is a sample of the uh, uh, Christmas fun which will be released this year. Um, and this is really, look, he says it won't have this blue, these blue little flowers in there, but it really makes it look so luxurious. It gives it a really nice look. 
and it tastes very very nice I'm not big into aromatics but it's a very very nice good quality aromatic I'm not sure what the flavors are it seems to, it feels like there's a bit of apple in there but I'm not sure um, but it's very nice very very enjoyable it's not too heavy and um, uh, I might well uh, order some of that when it comes out. Anyway, catch you soon. Just to show you the little. This is uh, down an alleyway through that archway there, opposite JJ Fox's, and it comes up into this uh, little pub here. So you and I will remember when we were kids, when we got a cold or a cough or a sore throat or anything else, that that, that little white packet Sasha, yeah. of the strongest tasting lozenge that you would ever, the face blowing. Yeah. So that was the last time I had those. What was the, there was another one which was like a brown oval pill, which also had a very strong. I thought that was the, that was part of Fisherman's Friends, but they made, they they ventured from the little white packet to a tube like oh, a. I'm getting confused with Negroids. Oh God. Negroids. Gosh. They wouldn't be called that now, would it? I wouldn't have thought so no. for a second. <laughs> Negroids. I thought that's what you meant. No, 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 no. no. Fisherman's Friends. So. Yeah. So you're right. These are Fisherman's Friends. The brown ones. So let me find the original. So I got all given these yesterday. Yeah, yeah. So you remember around. those? Yeah. Unbelievable. But they now, I had no idea. They're getting clever flavours. Come in all sorts. So that would have been your Negroid flavours or Negroid or whatever it was called. And a seed. Lemon. What's yeah. this one? Black currant. That sounds good. There's honey and lemon. And, and then two just clicking around those. Two sorts of originals. So I, I got given all these. Take a take a. No, I'm right. I, I didn't really like them that much. Oh, okay, I did, yeah. and I mentioned this, and the PR company happened to represent these people and have Anna Club. Amazed that there's still a bit of uh, market for it. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. apparently yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I repeated you told us. No, but Negroids. I thought that's what you meant. The, the little tiny little yeah, yeah, yeah. dots, and you they stuck were, them in the side of your mouth. Yeah, and, and they, they blew you away. Yeah, they're amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I've not seen them. Around. I think if they are around, they, they won't be they won't be named the same thing. No, definitely not. But yeah, that was um, amazing. Yeah, so I got last night got given a bottle of Havana um, Maestros and all That's those. That's the one that was released like a year ago or something. Yeah. 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 When you finished it, I'll, I'll sneakily pour it. I don't know if I can take too much alcohol. I'm okay. really not. I haven't got a, a, a much of a threshold with alcohol. Okay, fair enough. So I'm not gonna. Well, how are you I driving? Will try some, I'm driving. Yeah, yeah. So, so you I can don't try and drop. Yeah. Okay. Let's see how we go. I'll be honest. I've got one of those clippers, and they're not much good. I bought. I think three or four because it sort of seemed to make sense at the mm. time. When they brought it out, I thought, why didn't they think of that earlier? It's such an obvious thing to do. It's yeah. Just angle the flame a bit. And yeah, it's it. Yeah. But I find number one, it gets it very hot work. very quickly. I find. Yeah. And it, I just, it's just not great. The last one, maybe? Or no, 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 no. My train's not for a while, so I can take another. Yeah. If you if you force me, <laughs> terrible man. I do. We will uh, unscrew the cork at the bottom of his legs. <laughs> Drain it all out. No, but you know, <laughs> let's see. It's good. Solid. Same. Lovely. I couldn't do that. Just knock it back. I can't do that. I I don't. I you know. I, Your liver must be a bit pickled. No, not at all. No. My liver's in, in particularly good shape for somebody that that has. Abused it. Well, we're born with 70% more liver than we actually need. And it's an amazing organ anyway, because it reproduces itself. Exactly. So, if there were to be a thing to challenge in the body... Be yeah, I believe so. I have a 
come up with an equivalent of touch wood in the Jewish faith. So I would say touch a star or something, star of David. If I if I I'm ever in, if I'm ever in bother, then you gotta come here. Yeah, I hold on. Is there anything it. inside it? I'm not sure. When my wife went through that business with uh, that. Yeah, because there's supposed to be a scroll, isn't <laughs> That's there? Right, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't picked at this. I'm... You're not supposed to mess with it. No. <laughs> so when my wife had her operations, so I went to the. I don't know if you've heard of him, Rabbi Edelman. He, well, he's not alive anymore, but he was the. Um, he, he served in Golders Green as a rabbi for probably about 70 years. He was such a, a, a community it's a, leader. He was it's well a name loved. that rings a bell, but I'm not going to pretend. Very well loved man, and I was fortunate to have a, a reasonably good relationship with him through my involvement with a school that he was involved with and so I went to him for some for a blessing and some guidance and he had one of these things made up by a scribe with basically they they, they wrote on it God's name but in a disguised form okay. but a Kabbalistic version of it um, although I think you're not supposed to kind of hold on to them and you're kind of supposed to you're supposed to put them away with you know other in the Jewish faith, you've got any any books, any scrolls, or anything which has become damaged because it's a holy uh, item. You can't just dispose of it. You can't just chuck it in the bin. So you have to dispose of it in a respectful way. So a lot of stuff is buried um, in, a, in a burial ground. Sacred. Uh, yeah. Um, so they'll have a special grave in a burial ground, especially for those for items. For those items. Yeah. Okay. So um, so you're supposed to do that kind of thing with it. But I've kind of grown attached to it. I've never used it, never put it on since. She wore it during the operations and during the whole process and you know you believe that that kind of thing helps you know um, but that's uh, it was interesting they should say that. Well I, I, I have never taken this off so I, I at an airport it doesn't matter where I am whatever I'm doing. How did you come by it? My it? wife bought it for me. Oh, here's her. Uh, I don't know actually where she got it from. Right. I know she went to some effort to get it. That's uh, nice. That in itself has meaning as well. Absolutely, you know? yeah. absolutely. No, it's it's a lovely thing. And I, so if I if I'm ever feeling uh, anxious or I've seen something that's upset me, then I tend to, yeah, I tend to sort of put it off my neck and hold it in my hand. And it's therapeutic. No, yeah, it's just yeah. So, it's like worry beads. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah, my weekend in Europe, Disney. I meant that I was <laughs> clinging on to that bloody thing <laughs> for dear life <laughs> for the for the vast majority of, of the time. Yeah. That is a funny old thing how we how we evolve and how we, we look for answers and yeah. I, I, I was, well I went to a funeral on Friday and uh, it was a friend of mine's wife, very good friend of mine's wife. And Those moments sort of do make you wonder what plan there is, because how is that right? You know, there, there are, there are. Nobody deserves death or suffering. But, and this is a really tricky thing to say because it's so against any faith-based um, mentality. But there are some that deserved it more than she did or more than they did and you just thought well this doesn't make sense well, you know what they say it's often the, the, the righteous that suffer but why I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah I was hoping for some answers I honestly don't know it, it, the, the, like we were saying earlier on it's that one of the only things that you can take a bit of comfort from but it doesn't really give you any uh, comfort that you can analyze but it's just that we don't see the great, the grand scheme. We don't see the whole picture. And how you could see somebody suffering like that fitting into a picture, I don't know. I honestly don't know. But that's what belief is. That's what faith is. Faith is blind. Faith is not having the answers, yet still having faith. I don't know the answer. And, and, and these things challenge us all the time. They challenge us all the time. Faith is challenged all the time. And if it turns out that you were right, then all of those challenges that you ride, I'm not going to say overcome, because I don't know if you overcome it. You I ride don't it. think you do. You ride it. You, yeah, you, yeah. you, you tolerate it almost. Yeah. But it's it, a negative it will thing always, to say. But no, but it will always remain a part of... And you hope that if you were right, that you, at some point, whether it's 
afterlife or depending on what you believe in or after the Messiah comes or whatever it is if you believe in resurrection mm. um, at some point you hope to see the full picture and at least at that point get some benefit from seeing that full picture but um, so you have no fear of, of dying of course I, well, I would be irrational but fear, no I, d I, I don't mean it in that I don't mean I mean no sorry I'll rephrase fears that, you know it depends. It depends on the context you're talking about. If somebody's going to war and fighting, and will they fear death? I'm sure they will. Um, there are people, uh, what I find is that when people get to a certain age, not 60, but when people get in their 80s and 90s, they, they kind of, not always, but in certain circumstances, you see people coming to peace and at peace with themselves. Or you, you often see people saying that people who are on their deathbed, I'm at peace, I'm ready to go. You know, you, and what does that mean? I think they just become, they become more serene and closer to God, or closer to whatever's waiting for them after, after death. And it's almost they're in, in, a, in a halfway house, and therefore the physical aspect of dying doesn't be waiting for a friend uh, hold any fear for them because they're already almost halfway there. Yeah, yeah. That makes any yeah. sense? No, it does. Okay. It makes a huge amount of sense. Uh, I don't know that for a fact. It's just a feeling that I have that uh, my name's over, lo over the last you know, part of my other life, watching those kind of situations where that's how it would seem. I read, I read a lot about uh, a lot of the biographies of the Hasidic rabbis, of the dynasties, the great Hasidic dynasties of pre-war, especially. I'm an avid reader of that, and one of the the highlights, even though it sounds a bit morbid, but one of the highlights for me is. As you get towards the end of the book, they describe their departure from this world, and and it just those are those are some of the things which really hold uh, give me a, a huge amount of faith when, when I when I read about that because um, although the more I read it, I tend to get to there's a lot of poetic license. You know, when somebody reads about something which took place 200 years ago, yeah, it can't be a record it's a description how that person perceives it or how that person has heard it passed from this person to that person to that person so it is poetic and it is made to look rosy but, but still isn't, the bible is 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 one of those Absolutely. things isn't it? for the christian faith that's it's 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 hearsay not fact none of it's fact is it at all well it depends what you call fact if it depends what your belief structure is my belief structure is is that it's it was uh, written by Moses, handed down by God. So I can't prove it, but you know. But in your mind, it's, it's fact. The, there are, I can't necessarily think of any right now, but I've gone through times in life where you just see the poetic justice, or if you like, or call it karma, if you like. I don't know what you want to call it. Yeah, karma's but, a, but karma's we're, a we're, modern way of. Yeah, of saying that, but things where you see how and again I don't want to come across evangelical about the Jewish faith and, and possibly you'll see the same mirrored in other faiths but, but I'm not familiar with that so I can only talk about Jewish faith but sometimes you'll just see certain situations which um, have been almost foretold so if you in certain parts of the Talmud you'll see certain logics which if you I don't know if you've ever looked at the Talmud at all the Talmud is, is, is a collection of um, uh, discourses, if you like, of super high rabbis, if you like, going back a couple of thousand years, and every aspect of um, life is discussed. So the Bible is dissected, literally letter by letter, and what you can derive from each of those inferences, and you know th uh, that you can take from every word of the Bible. So when you're talking about keeping Sabbath, for instance, um, I'll give you one example: a light switch. Yeah, um, I don't use a, uh, a light switch on the Sabbath. We use electricity because if it's switched on before, it stays on. Yeah. Uh, or you use a time switch, that kind of thing. Now, there was no electricity 2,000 years ago. So the, the modern Jews would say, or the liberal Jews would say, that wasn't accounted for in the Bible. I can use it on Sabbath. It's not an issue for me. And I can understand the argument. Um, but the rabbis, through the generations, use inferences and comparisons and uh, lots of different arguments in order to decide and prescribe how you lead your life in all aspects of your life so the light switch coming back to the light switch 
what, um, what do you think that would be the problem with the light switch? If you had to guess, what would you think would be the problem with the light switch? What, from a faith-based point of view? From, from the, the Jewish religion, things that you know. I don't know how much you know about the religion. What you well, uh, no, I understand that... that, uh, that uh, I, I would say that the closest you'd probably get to is perhaps fire. Yeah. yeah? Energy. Yeah. yeah. So you're not allowed to start a fire on the yeah. Sabbath. So if, if, so you, if, you, if you, you switch, switch a light, switch, you are creating, energy, creating an energy. energy, especially that, if it's that, a light bulb. Thank you very much. Especially if it's a light bulb uh, with a tungsten element, which yeah. is a fire, essentially. A modern version of it, but certainly that. But that's not all it is. For most people, the reason why we don't put on a light on the Sabbath is because it's considered a product of building. You're not allowed to build on the Sabbath. You're not allowed to put one brick on top of another oh, on the see. Sabbath. When you light a switch, you're building a circuit, an electrical circuit. Now, you wouldn't believe that, but <laughs> it's all down to interpretation of the rabbis. Some people do say it's to do with fire, and there is an element of that. But for the, I think for the most part, most people agree that it's to do with building a circle, which seems completely foreign when it's light switch, that's not building, but... Well, well it is. That's how, in and, a, and, in and a... it's, it's, it's very, very prescriptive, but it's all down to interpretation and, uh, and your level of faith in that uh, interpretation. So the Talmud, well, the point I was coming to is that the, the legal, um, the whole legal structure in the world, you go back and read the Talmud, it's all there. Oh, no, it's yeah, no, there. that I understand. Everything, you know, the, yeah. the really intricate legal arguments when it comes to capital punishment or capital crimes, blue, blue collar uh, and white collar crime, crimes, it's all in there, every single thing. And the vast majority of legal precedents, you will find that, um, similar um, uh, examples in the Talmud. And, and I'm sure other religions have similar situations, but in the well, Talmud, sure. I don't know. But in the Talmud, you will find it all in, in the arguments which are so intricate. And sometimes I think to myself, and I, and I, and I hear of something in the news, or there was some really intricate and perhaps a, a, a revolutionary... Legal case. Uh, there are many times when, I'll, as you say, a, a complex legal case or something, and then I remember that I'd studied it at some point. Yeah, yeah. In exact same... You've seen it. You know, and, you, the, and the precedent that they used in, the, yeah. in that court case. What I'm is, is that... The, point I was coming to was that when we were talking about faith and how you maintain faith despite seeing not seeing evidence but it's these kind of things which when you run your whole life through as a, a religious person you experience those kind of things all of these things chip away at your disbelief if you like and help to give you belief so when you see something 2,000 years ago has a legal structure and it makes sense today it tells you that that has yeah, some, yeah. some validity. It's got some legs. It's got legs. Yeah. And therefore, if that had legs 2,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago is much closer to creation than we are now. Of course. And the, the, the legacy going through from the Talmud, then going through the forefathers, Egypt, all of that kind of stuff, is not so distant anymore. No. And although it might sound like a fable when the Jews went out of Egypt and split the sea and all that kind of thing, but if that same Talmud can have such complex but logical arguments, also no. talks about splitting of the sea, yeah, yeah. they weren't mad people. No. So that kind of helps. It wow. Helps. It helps. In your day-to-day -day belief, it helps in your faith. Because it gives, you cre it gives it credence to some extent. Whilst you don't have evidence, a few thousand years down the line where we are today, it's, if you take a, a new guy who's never experienced religion and you try to convince him to, to uh, believe in religion, it's an almost impossible task. But when you grow up in a religion, yes, there is a, a certain amount of brainwashing, if you like, because you're growing up without anything else. But when you go back and you see, okay, you're right. Sweetness. Simon. I smell you from the top of the road. <laughs> how you doing? You all right? Not bad, how are you? Yeah, man. Do you know Simon? We have met once in, uh, in 1A's. I'm so sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it was a terrible, terrible experience. Oh yeah, can you never put a face to the That's name? Right. You're, you're like non-existent, you're I like am. the invisible man. I am, yeah. What's cracking? That's and it's good. Wally's there. Well, I'm just uh, on my way now. Just said uh, my goodbyes to Justin. Um, for the last half an hour or so, we were joined by uh, several members, or ex-members of CSUK, which is a cigar group, and now a uh, different cigar group as well, I can't, some 101 something cigars. Um, but um, there was uh, Kay and I can't remember the names of the other gentlemen, but uh, a very nice little get together, impromptu. 
there is um, a cigar evening, some kind of event happening tonight, which they're all meeting up at. So, but uh, a very, very, as you can tell from the chat, um, some really interesting uh, discussions. I'm not sure how much of it I'll uh, put in, how much I'll edit. Some of it's personal, um, but uh, another fantastic um, pipe or cigar related meetup. Just uh, it really reaffirms what I said yesterday at the end of the uh, Pipe Club of London meet. Um, how sitting down with whether it's a pipe or a cigar. It just sets you in that frame of mind to, to just share, you know, share your thoughts, share your mind and have a nice discussion, whether it be a social chat or a philosophical one. Um, it just uh, puts you in that frame of mind where you can just, you know that you're talking to somebody of a similar um, sort of mindset and uh, you can just relax and let your uh, your mind flow and your uh, speech flow freely you don't have to worry about it no pc you know business and just talk highly highly recommend that you try and meet up with a like-minded person every so often i'm just uh, exceptionally fortunate that it's twice this week but usually it's few and far between but justin is somebody that we've you know, when we sat down and and, uh, and started uh, talking, you can see that it's as if we've, you know, been friends for years and known each other for years. Whereas in reality, we've known each other um, for uh, perhaps a year and a half, something like that. Met up in the first instance. Um, I mean, this is the first physical meeting, but we've met online, uh, as I say, about a year, a year and a half ago via CS UK on Facebook, and. Um, through, I suppose, our religious interests, we kind of became quite uh, good sort of chat buddies. And we've spoken many times, whether it be um, on messaging or... Um, I can't remember if we've actually spoken over the phone in the past or not. I don't remember. But um, certainly a very interesting uh, gentleman and had a lot of experiences and a lot of successes in life as all of, all of us do we have our challenges in life and um, just a great experience and as I say I recommend it highly to anybody if you're a pipe or a cigar smoker just spend some time with some like-minded people that's about it I've uh, been very fortunate I've come away with some cigars I came without anything today because it was an impromptu meeting so I felt a little bit guilty not being able to exchange and hand over but I'll find a way of doing that good evening all um, just a quick one just to um, show you the bits and pieces that I came away with today um, I was just um, playing it through some of the clips and uh, really the, the conversation really went to quite uh, to quite a broad spectrum and um, I quite enjoyed listening back to them anyway um, so First and foremost, um, Justin gave me this bag. Um, so this is the Jock Tobacco. Um, this is from South Africa. It's a quite a quite a dry tobacco, and it's got quite a sort of dry very birdie-ish kind of aroma and a little bit of cocoa um, I smoked it I didn't really um, sort of fully um, digest the flavours and everything but it was it, it reminded me a little bit of, of something like a haunted bookshop but in a much milder kind of form um, so I'll do a, a proper impressions video at some point um, but a really nice generous uh, helping there good few ounces um, and it seems to be um, quite mild and uh, something that I could possibly revisit. Um, he also gave me some falcons. He uh, knew that I was trying to try out falcons. Super generous of him. He's given me two falcons. Um, and people were telling me to get these older bent ones. I don't know if this is the old one or the new one, to be honest. I have no idea. I'll, I'll 
perhaps I'll put some pictures or something like that, or somebody watching can tell me if, if this is if these are the older or the newer ones. Um, pretty lightweight, it's the first time I've actually owned a Falcon. Um, they're barely used, they don't look very used at all. Nice bit of green on this one. It's a straight, I guess a billiard style. Got these little filters in the bottom. And he's also been kind enough to give me uh, a couple of bags of these uh, little dry ring filters. So we'll give that a go, we'll see how that goes. So a couple of bags of that. And he also very generously gave me some Penzance. He knew that I was running out, and that was before I won that tin from Old Bird. Again, another very generous helping. That's very, very, very generous indeed, Justin. Very nice. So it boosts my Penzance stock nicely. Now to the cigars, um, right at the end of the video, um, we uh, met up with Kay, as I mentioned earlier, um, and a couple of his mates, um, and he gave me this uh, cigar, which is very nice, really unexpected. This is a Hamlet 2050 year by Rocky Patel. It's supposed to be a good cigar, mild, um, so we'll do an impressions of that one at some point. Kay, if you do watch this, thank you very much. And then we have I've already put these in plastic containers to keep them protected. Um, this is a poor Lonaga from 1997. I'm not getting any aroma off it at all. Um, I'm going to leave it in here for a while and perhaps some of the aromas will build up. Yeah, it's been out and about so it hasn't, uh, obviously the aromas have evaporated a little bit. And here we have uh, Churchill Romeo Giglietta. Mm. I'm getting a nice uh, sort of tangy aroma, sweet aroma on the foot there. So this is the original Churchill. This is a proper Churchill. Uh, it'll be a, a seven inch or six and a half inch by, I think a uh, classic Churchill is a 49 uh, ring gauge, I think. So that is also one I'm gonna treasure and keep for a special occasion. Um, so that's um, sorry, I've just hit the mic. So that's what um, I came away with today. But I came away, away with a lot more, and that was a fantastic experience, a really fantastic, uh, enjoyable afternoon. Um, and uh, as I've said so many times already in this video, if you can get yourself an opportunity to have a meet up with people, definitely give it a go. All right, um, by the time I've edited this and put it all together, it'll be a long video, I'm sure. Um, so I hope it's been enjoyable. I hope you've enjoyed some of the discussion. And I will catch you on the very next one. This is London Calling.